Let's look at the JavaFX border pane. So border pane is uh, different from the others because it's it's more for creating something like a main layout. So what we can do with the border pane is we have something called top and center, right, left, and bottom. And we can define these as different containers for anything else, other containers, any node that we have in uh, JavaFX, we can put them in there. So what I want to show is how we can put some, I'll put some labels, I'll put some buttons, and uh, maybe even I'll put like HBox or VBox or something into it as I went through in one of my former videos. So let's try to look at that. So first off, let's try to remove the code that we have here for for this uh, VBox. Maybe just, no, I think actually I'm going to create a... Uh, uh, keep it because I want to uh, put this grid pane into the actual um, border layout. So I have this grid pane here and instead of using grid pane as the base, um, I'm going to say wrap in and then we're going to put it into a border pane. So what we can see with the border pane is we have an insert top, insert left, and then we have grid pane, which is in the center. If I move that, we can actually better see that we have top, bottom, left, right, and center. And if I put it in the center, it will go there to the left, to the top. This is how, how we use it. So I'll put it in the center and the center will automatically fill out the entire screen if there's nothing inside of the top pane. So let's put something else. So let's say that I, I really want something inside of the top pane, like I want something like some buttons for a menu or something like that. So I want to insert something like that. So I'm going to use something that can lay it out uh, in a vertical, uh, sorry, horizontal way. So I'll go for the H box. And I'll put that into the top and you can see now the H box will be at the top. So now I have the H box here and I have that here. And automatically, if we look at the border pane constraints, we can see we can set some alignment and margins and stuff like that. And that's the same here, alignment and margins and stuff like that. So this is what we can do with the border pane uh, constraints. We also have uh, the normal properties and everything, and we have the layout like this. So that's basically it. So um, if we see this um, is the uh, H box, so that is here. So I want to put something into the H box. So I'm going to give that H box a name, and I think I'm going to call it something like H box top and then the other one the grid pane is just I'll keep the name grid pane and probably I have to go to the border pane and and just oh so the controller is still here that's pretty nice so let's keep it like that so I'll just save this and go back to and try to run the program and I'll probably get an error let's see oh grid pane is still there so so this way we can now see that we have this uh, H box up here and then we have our normal grid pane inside of the center like that. So if we put buttons in here now, we should actually see that they, these would flow from, from side to side. Another thing you can see now is that it doesn't scale as well. So we have to set something on the grid pane because it's kind of like the grid pane is locked Oh, sorry, the uh, border pane is not really filling out the entire uh, screen right now. So let's look at that later. First, I want to put something in the H box up here. So let's create some buttons. So I'll just do a for loop. Sorry. Um, and let's just do like five buttons. Something like that. 
Wow, okay. I, okay, so pretty weird I did that. So I, and let's create five. So I'm going to say button B equals new button, my button, and then plus, I'll just add the number so we can see their different instances. And then of course we need to add it to, um, to the hbox. So if we want to add it to the hbox, of course we'll need to uh, define that up here so that it can get injected. So we're going to say hbox and I called it uh, hbox like that. And no, maybe not. Let's go in here, hbox top. I called it that, so that's why it's not purple. That should be better. Okay, still great. Oh, that's because I'm not using it, of course. So we go here and say hbox top, and then we're going to say get children, or maybe just get children, add, and then we put the button like that. So we'll have five button. Let's look at that. And we have an error here. Okay, that's because I used the button B up here. So we'll call it, just call it BTN for now. Like this. And we can now see that we have the buttons up here. And also we can set up other stuff. If we go in here and go to um, open in scene builder and we look at the hbox here and the layout so it's aligned in center of the top part of the border pane we can see the padding we can see the spacing preferred height and width and everything looks uh, fine and we have the normal properties as well so that's good. And let's try to click the border pane. So if you look at the properties here um, and the layout, it's it's a bit different here. So we can say uh, like like usual, the preferred width. Uh, it says to use the computed size right now. So because I'm I haven't set any size for the. Uh, the entire program, I, I can set that to something like um, 800 here and then 600 width. So, and save that and go back to the application. And it should be a bit uh, bigger now. And we can see that it looks like the top part is following, but this one is not. So if we go back, the sensor should be following as well. Then we can see now that if we look in here, uh, we can see that it doesn't fill out. Of course, we could make it a bit bigger, but it still wouldn't help. Uh, let's just show that here. Create lines visible and then preview. Still wouldn't really help because it's still a fixed size. So what we can do is we can say that we don't have any special layout properties for the border pane other than it should be in the center and some mar margin stuff. So I think the easiest way is to um, set the preferred width uh, just to uh, computed size and the uh, max width, we're going to set that to max value like that. So now if we show that, it's a bit hard to see on that background, but if we show that, we can see that now it, it actually follows that. Of course, it doesn't follow it downwards because uh, there's the limits on the row and columns and everything, but it does actually fill out the screen now, uh, just like the HBox does. So that's a bit nicer. And we'll just keep the lines because it doesn't look very good. But so if we do this in our program now, we have, should have it following, no, forgot to save it then save 
This is always a problem. So now it got um, filled up like that. There is some problem here. So I better see what it is. Let's go back. So it has to do with the, let's see here. So the problem is that I'm using the preferred size for minimum, minimum width and that's computed. So if we just put this to computed size, it should work uh, a bit better. Let's try that. So there is some extra things we should uh, probably look at that it can go outside like this. Maybe we should set some maximum constraints on that or minimum constraints, but for now it looks pretty, pretty good. So, yeah. So this way, if you see everything is resizing except the H box up here, which is fixed. So if you want something like a fixed top like this or a fixed bottom, you could have copyright notice or links or something like that. Um, you can actually use this for doing layout and then do any other layout in the middle that you think is would be uh, nice. So it's pretty easy to use and the middle part of it, if the control that you have inside of it does fill out, then you can actually uh, easily um, create some nice layouts that will follow the screen uh, any way that you want. So that's it for the um, border pane, pretty easy to use. And I would definitely recommend it in situations for menus and stuff like that. So I think this is kind of like a main layout thing, not something that you probably would use in any other situation than that. And it would maybe be nice to make that uh, the main pane of your program um, so that you can easily add a top part and a button part, a left and right part. So in the next video, I'll be talking a bit about um, the last two, the, oh no, sorry, the stack pane. And this is something that I seldomly used. And I'm going to discuss how this can be used with the C part here. I'll try to explain that.